I can't believe it. We were deep in the old growth forest. We walked this very trail yesterday. And here's an agaricon. It's a little bit unusual in its shape. So I may have just missed it from pattern in recognition. But today, the next day, I recognize it. And sure enough, it's an agaricon, brown rock fungus. You can see that the wood is, is uh, dark brown in the background. It's ligny. It breaks down cellulose. It leaves, it leaves the ligny. But this is a this is a fantastic um, first agaricon in the old growth this season. Come closer and look at it. So this is an agaricon, Fomitopsis officinalis, or Librisophomis officinalis, if you will. This is an unusual form. Um, these are annual growth rings. It turns the wood dark brown because this is lignine. It breaks down cellulose, leaving the lignine behind. Uh, we walked past this yesterday in the old growth forest. Didn't even notice it. Uh, today, I spied it, and uh, it's got these beautiful little droplets, which have always been interesting to me to look at, see if they concentrate interesting medicinal compounds. Um, and we're going to leave this one here. We'll excise a small piece of tissue on the back side. And from our experience, these things actually heal and regrow, especially from the under, under part, the hymenium here. This is a very, very rapidly growing hymenial growth. This is very, very vo uh, viable. It's on its way from a very small form. So this thing will probably get around this big. Um, now we know where it is, we'll geotag it. We'll come back here each year and uh, hopefully it's still here and we'll watch it grow. So we'll put this in our culture collection um, so it'll be our 83rd or 84th strain of Agaricon, our culture library, and we'll uh, then DNA sequence it um, and uh, publish an article eventually with this specimen included. Okay, so I want to do minimum harm to this, and I'm going to cut right back in here to get a little chunk. Uh, we know this will reheal. Uh, but I don't want to disfigure the outside just for cosmetic purposes. I just think it's a, a nice aesthetic to follow. And so, oh yeah, that is nice, nice incision, Stamets. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is looking really good. Okay, I want to make sure I have enough amount of tissue on this. And, uh, So, that's more than enough tissue. And now if you look at the conch, come over this way, look at it. You can't even see that I took a piece. Low impact people, it's really important. And it's also important to me visually. I don't like people who kick mushrooms. Kids are an exception. But I think it, keeping the aesthetic of the mushroom intact is really important for other people's enjoyment. And just generally speaking, a matter of respect to the mushroom. So, we'll now clone this. Stay tuned. Okay, Dr. Pam, here's the specimen. Yep, we have to keep it sterile, so we have band-aids. <laughs> so we're gonna use a band-aid to keep it sterile, so. We have no stock in this company. Oh, isn't that cute? Yeah. Look at that. Okay, it won't be perfectly sterile, but you know, that's what we got. Okay. Hey. Right on. There you go. To the laboratory. In the Batmobile. <laughs> now. In the Mushroomobile. <laughs> Beam us up. <laughs>